Hey guys, Brandon Wong here with Photo Boost Supply Co. And we build photo boosts that make you guys money. We've helped over 2,000 people from all over the world make on the average of $71,000 a year. In fact, they're so successful that over 55% of them go on to buy two or more photo boosts. But today we're going to be talking about website critiques, photo booth websites to be exact. And I'm super excited to dive in. I pose a question in our private Facebook group. This is a special mastermind that all of our owners get access to. And we share ideas on how to grow your business and even give referrals out. So there was 35 comments of people who wanted to get their website critiqued. There's no way I can go over all of them, but I did randomly select a few. And I'm going to be diving into it right now. Let's get started. Hey guys, I'm in the Photo Booth Supply Co. Owners Group, and this is the thread where I asked who wanted to get their website critiqued. And you can see there's over 30 comments on here of people's websites. Again, there's no way I can go through all of them. There are a few that I did uh, randomly select on here, and I'm going to try to go over them as much as possible. Um, I will say, first and foremost, what is a website supposed to do for you? Well, it's a lead generation device. So if you don't have any sort of way to get as many emails or phone numbers as possible on this website, then you're doing it wrong. And I'll go over a few of those things when I go into the websites. Another thing is a website's supposed to do three things right when you go onto there. Um, you have to remember that your client is looking through possibly dozens of different photo booth websites, just like how I am doing right now. So you have to get their attention right away right when they go into the web page in both desktop and on the mobile view as well. Um, today I'm going to be going over desktop because that's what I'm on right now, but you have to make sure that your website is also responsive. And by responsive, I mean it works super well on an iPhone or any mobile device. Uh, more than 50% of your visitors now are coming from a mobile platform, so you have to make sure we cater to that audience or else, you know, who would, do you want to have 50% of your business drop off? I don't think so. So make sure it's optimized for mobile too. Now, the three things that your website has to do right when you land on there, these three questions need to be answered right away are number one, what do you do? Number two is why should I stay? And then the last one is what do I do next? And those three questions are really important. So let's just dive right in really quickly and just look at a few of these websites and see if they answer all three of these questions. So uh, what do you do? Snapbox Photo Booth Co. Cool, I got that. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, what do we do here? We offer solution. Offer solution of what? I'm not entirely sure. Just looking at this, um, this could be a company selling um, Star Wars masks, could be selling a company selling props. I'm not entirely sure right away. Remember, I'm looking through dozens of websites, so are your clients. You have to be very obvious with them. Let them know exactly what you do. Yes, Cloud9 Photo Booth is way up here in the top left, but that Photo Booth font is so, so small. I, I really don't know. Next, uh, we'll make sure your guests have a great time and something to show for. Find out more. Cool. Um, that's great. I still don't know exactly what you guys do though. Um, are you guys a photo booth company? Like how do you guys make sure that the guests have a great time? Uh, I'm, I'm really gonna be a stickler to this. Just be super obvious. Tell people you're a photo booth rental company or something like that. You have to just really drill that home and make it super obvious. Uh, another one, cool, Salsa Booth. Our fully digital photo booth gives your guests instant memories. Um, you can tell I had a difficult time reading that because of the background. So uh, maybe I would suggest possibly making a thicker opacity back here or maybe having the video be a little less opacity just so that it's more, a little more legible. I will say I am very flattered that you guys are using the name of our photo booth, Salsa, Queso, Legacy, etc. I will say that your customers don't care. Um, especially at this early of the stage, I wouldn't even put the word salsa on there. I would just remove this all together and just say, our digital photo booth gives your guests instant memories. Like this is the best and most clearest way um, that I've seen so far that tells the prospective customers exactly what you guys do. So kudos to this website, fantastic. Um, what do we do here? Okay, I see fun and festive. Of course, I see photo booth company up here, which is great. And this is a big, big logo, but you can probably see as you keep going on the website here and click that logo is probably going to take up a lot of real estate. So I would probably make that logo a little smaller um, and 
put again something very obvious right in the home page of what you guys do um, these images are beautiful i think a lot of these are actually taken from our marketing materials which is fantastic i love the branding here which is great so next one what do we do a custom experience unforgettable memories cool i will say layout aesthetics of this website look freaking awesome i would have to say though it's not super obvious what you guys do this looks like a super cool device and we all know or most of us know what peso looks like what our photo booths look like but for most people you got to remember their idea of a photo booth is a big black box with the curtains or red drapes they probably looking at this and like well what is that they, they might not even correlate or not might not even understand that that's a photo booth so again i would probably put the words photo booth on here somewhere again i understand that the photo booth x is in your name I still think it's it's better just to have that redundancy on there as well. It's just really important. Um, and again, I know an argument might be, well, if they scroll down, they can see, welcome to Photo Booth X, Photo Booth, Photo Booth, Photo Booth. Shouldn't that be obvious, Brandon? But you gotta remember, people are opening like 10 tabs at once, just like I'm doing right now. And it has to be just really obvious what you guys do. So I would probably put a custom Photo Booth experience on Forgettable Memories. Just add that word in there. Yes, I know it might be redundant, but it's just so important just to not confuse your customer because they might look at this queso unit and think, wow, I, I have no idea what that is. Like, uh, I, I've never seen a photo booth like that before. Um, but they're not even associate with a photo booth. Next one. All right, super cool. I think this is supposed to be a looping video. Let me refresh it. I did peek at all these right before hopping on this. Uh, so while that's refreshing, I'll go to the next one. Okay, cool. Making new memories that last a lifetime, contact us. Okay, cool. Again, um, not a lot of these websites have the word photo booth in there. Okay, cool, Smitten Booth, great. I think I know what you guys do there. Uh, photo Booth Co, cool. Uh, this was interesting because there's just so much negative space up here. This is almost what I gravitate towards first. And this image is cropped off here. Um, just so you guys know, whenever you crop off anything, that immediately tells the user or the, whoever's viewing it um, to not look, to look away. So this is cropped off. I'm gonna be looking up here. This is kind of what I look at. Um, but let's just say we do scroll down. Let's just say the user popped up right here uh, or something like that. Um, cool, I, I see what I think is a photo booth, but again, our the photo booths that we sell at Photo Booth Supply Co are, are so different, are so new, so cutting edge. A lot of our your customers and our customers might not even know that it's a photo booth. Uh, there's so many people when I tell them, oh, we own Photo Booth Supply Co, we build photo booths that make people money. And they say, oh, cool, like those big boxy ones. Yeah, so you have to tell people straight up front what you guys do. Um, just make it really obvious here. Awesome. So the next thing, the next question is, why should I stay? And this question really is answered by showing the pizzazz, right? And you could answer this by like this photo booth X right here. Amazing website. This is why I should stay because I'm an aesthetic guy. I'm super OCD. Um, I love clean looks. I love beauty. Um, this immediately stands out. It has this beautiful um, coral pink, which is super in fashion. It has the these fun shapes, which is also um, a hit right now too. And um, it's just really fun. And just that alone, just the branding, the font choice, um, the element of fun will, will make me want to stay. This is why I want to stay. Uh, going back over here, showing these fun images, that, that's always great. I always try to be really curate the experience that you want to show here. If you want to have uh, more bookings with less props, then obviously show pictures with no props. If you want more bookings with high-end weddings, then only show super high-end weddings. So just make sure you really curate that there. Um, obviously, I love when people use our marketing materials that we provide you for free because we try to elevate that uh, those aesthetics, we obviously have professional photographers capturing those, professional videographers. Um, and of course, we have awesome Photoshop mockups as well. So I always love when customers use our free marketing materials that you guys get with every purchase. So that's always great. Um, again, here, this is a cool backdrop, but I would probably want to have something more engaging. I'm always a fan of video. You got to remember um, a photo is worth a thousand words. But if there's 24 frames per second in a video, you can imagine how many potentially millions of words that we're conveying through a video, uh, which is why I'm always a fan of something like this, where sitting down for even just five seconds, I'm already seeing one, two, three, four different scenes 
of the photo booth being in use, photo people laughing in front of it, the colors that your photo booth can do. Um, it just conveys so much value right away. Um, it's amazing. So I, if possible, I always recommend doing a video. Luckily, uh, with Queso, uh, when we sell, we have actually three promo videos for free. And Salsa um, comes with, I think, one of those. Um, this is a really quick video. The LED is running. And there's this promo film that we sell as well if you guys really want to stand out. And what we do is we add the watermark on exactly what you just saw there um, and just really makes you stand out from your competition. Super cool. That's I would I would definitely want to stay after looking here. Um, I, the branding on this on point, I love it. I, I think it's really quick critique here. There's a lot of padding over here. I'd probably make this a whole lot smaller or even remove it. Um, this sort of design here is really conflicting with design right in the middle. Um, so it's like this looks beautiful, that looks beautiful. Like where do you want my eyes to, to land on? Um, I want my I prefer looking straight in the middle here, looking at all this. No one really cares about the name of your company, to be super frank, right? Unless you're a huge, huge brand like that's been around for decades. But for the most part, your customers aren't going to care. So I always try to put as, as little of importance on your personal brand as much as possible. Uh, even on Photo Booth Supply Co.'s website, we don't even say Photo Booth Supply Co. in the top left corner. It just has our logo and that's it. Because I'm fully convinced that no one really cares about us. They care about what they can get from your company. And once they convey that, and maybe once they follow your Instagram, maybe once they sign up for an email campaign, then they might start to fall in love with your brand. But this is not the time and place for it. You want to grab their attention right away. So I would completely either like just change that to text and not compete with all this. It's all good though, but beautiful, beautiful branding here. I love this video too. I don't know where it, is. it looks like stock footage. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure, but that looks super fun. Uh, just great stuff. Really good stuff here. So definitely would want to stay on this website. Would want to stay on that website. Um, this video's not loading. I don't know why. Uh, but videos are always good here. But the lack of text is scary. Some some people might just bounce right away and, and not stay on the website because there's no text. They're not instantly delivered in a very, very straightforward manner what you guys do. So definitely would put that there. Um, here... This is an interesting photo. Uh, I don't know. Okay. I mean, first of all, I think it's a fun photo. I wish there was a, it was just showed more because again, I'm, I'm really against just showing either like just the, just the output or just the photo. I really want to show as much as possible right away because you might be showing here. I mean, this could look like a stock photo for a lot of websites. So are you selling props? Um, are you, are you selling like clothing even, like I, I'm not entirely sure. Obviously this tagline helps a lot, but it doesn't say photo booth on there. So I would just say make new memories last a lifetime with our unique photo booth, luxurious photo booth, etc. And then I would have this slideshow, whether it shows more output of photos or pictures of the photo booth or even both the photo booth and the people in front of it. That's always really important because not only are you showing the product that you are renting, which is the photo booth, but you're also showing people having fun, which is also an output of what your clients want. Yes, they want a photo booth at the surface level, but what they really want is to have their guests have a freaking blast at their event. So you want to make sure you convey both of that. And also super minor critique, and maybe it's just me, but the shadow looks like armpit sweat. I just want to, <laughs> I'm such a huge stickler on, on pictures on websites. So I just want to make sure that everything you show is in, in super tip top shape and beautiful. Um, this looks like armpit sweat to me. Maybe it's not, maybe it's a shadow, but even me just thinking that already, I would just take it off the website. If you're even looking at a picture or video that you're displaying on your website and you're second guessing it, just take it off. It has to be an amazing image that again, makes people want to stay. So next year, smitten. So for me, I'm a huge fan of minimalistic, sites so this already is a, is a win for me um again i again i don't really care about logos too much and i don't think the customers really care about it i i actually am a big fan of of the look of this logo although i don't really know what that top thing is uh, i apologize or whoever that i think like a fish i'm not sure anyway uh again i would probably still put this on the top left though um and just make it really easy 
uh, and then again put something in here that says you know vintage photo booths or high-end photo booths luxurious photo booths something that just really conveys what you guys offer and what makes you guys special too um, also i have to say that the these all these offers are really close to each other and there's a lot of them too so i would really pick and choose your battles but we can talk about that later on all right last one here why should i stay again they're using our marketing images, which I absolutely love. They look high end, we're very well styled, beautiful. You're gonna absolutely wanna stay. So this looks great. So the last thing, if you guys remember, is what do I do next? And this is where a lot of websites actually fall short. Uh, you're telling these people to go on your website via, and you're paying for Google ads, you're paying for Facebook ads. You're, you're getting these amazing referrals from your friends in the industry, but you're not telling people what to do on your website. So even here, like, what do I do? Like, I don't, there's nothing, there's no immediate obvious place to click next or go next. That's it here. Where do I, where do I click? Book today. Oh, that this parallax is weird. Okay. Fix this parallax. That's interesting. Um, so book today. Okay, so you're making the person scroll down two sections before they get the obvious, hey, book today. So we want some sort of what we call call to action. Some people might call them buttons, but we want to have this right up here for every website, either right in the middle or on the top right or something. And this button has to stand out visually. So we have to tell people again, this is what we do. This is why you should stay, and this is what you should do next. Big, big button, call to action, different color, accent color, in your face, right? Because it tells people, okay, cool. Now I know that I could book you guys or at least check my availability or learn more or contact. It's We need something on there to let people know what to do next. So let's go to Philly boot. This is probably the only example on this, on these entire roster websites that I found that actually has a call to action here, find out more, which is great. So I can click that and it just scrolls down, which is fine. Um, I'd probably prefer it go to a contact form or something like that. Cause I'm not able to en enter in my email. Um, but yeah. Okay. So we have an email form right down there. Cool. That's great. What do I do next? No button. No, there's a, okay. Book now. That's good, but it's not, highlighted it's not standing out okay um or your call us might be like call us right if you're really good on the phone and you're available all the time put your phone number right smack in the middle if you're if you're a, a smooth um person a smooth salesperson that can can close anybody yeah phone number everywhere phone number on the top phone number in the middle phone number at the footer phone number everywhere awesome uh, here again the beautiful beautiful website i don't know where to click right and if you want people to contact, then make sure that there's some sort of button there, or something that's highlighting that section. Um, here too, such a gorgeous website, but again, I don't know what to do next. Uh, we need a button here or something like that, or at least highlight the contact button there. Um, and, and you have to make sure that these buttons to let them know what to do next are, are following you everywhere. So for this photo with X website, I would have a button right here. I'd have a button right here. I might even have a button right here, right? You always have to remind them of, of what to do next. So even if I click this, let's see this prism here, a cube pool, let's see a queso, love, love that name for queso. That's great. So book cube now, this is great. So this is a great example, right? Book cube now, this, this button, this layout should have been on the homepage. And it's the most important place to put this because that's where most people are gonna be landing on unless you're doing ads directly to this page. So I need, I wouldn't love another button here and another button here and another button here. You see how like, right when I land on this, you're telling them what to do on this book cube now, and then you're scrolling down and there's no other area to, to do that. It just all until all the way down here. But even then when you're actually showing the pricing, okay, here's the, here's a button now. Yeah kind of far down. I would probably put it like a book now underneath every single one of these, just so it's really obvious. Your eyes are right where you want them. You know, you're talking about the pricing over here. I just want to put, do a book now button there. That'd be really cool. All right. So that looks great. And uh, let's go here again. 
no button, nothing highlighted in the top right. I don't know what to do next. Even scrolling down here, there's no button or anything that kind of stands out to me that lets me know what to do next at all. There's not even a contact form down here. So yeah, let your customers know what you want them to do. Whether it be just, you can literally write just hand me money or something. <laughs> just tell them what the next step is. Again, it could be contact, check availability, um, call us. Uh, fill out a form, learn more, whatever, right? Perfect, love it, contact us, great. I would say just in terms of the user interface here, I'd probably pick a little darker font, that light pink on top of that white is a little hard to read. So um, that would be fantastic there. And I always think it's a good form to, um, sorry, not good form, but uh, good practice to copy the call to action, whatever you want them to do on the top right up here just so that it follows them everywhere they go. Um, some people might ask, and I've seen this before too, where the call to action is different throughout the entire website. So here might be contact us. Another one might be check availability, blah, blah, blah. And for me, I would like to keep it consistent. So like it says, learn more down here. Um, really narrow down and figure out what journey you want the customer to go through on your website. Do you want them to go straight to the backdrop selection? Do you want them to look at um, your photo booth features first? Do you want them to look at um, your galleries? Just really figure out the, the method for the highest conversion rate for you. And then that's the call to action that you want to kind of plaster all over your website. Um, most of the time though, it's something like a contact us or learn more or something like that. Um, you really want to drive home the value that you can provide from your photo booth. Uh, some of the more experiential marketing photo booth companies that I know, um, their first call to action, or the first step that they want to do is do you want to see the case studies? Do you want to show off the uniqueness of all the different activations you can do, different backdrops, different types of photo booths, different green screens, with every company being different. Uh, but someone who's maybe doing a lot of weddings, maybe the first thing that they want to do is maybe go to a reviews page um, or an, a, an area where it shows off um, the amount of accolades that the company has received. Reason being is that a lot of these wedding clients, they just want something that's less risky. They want someone who has done a super good job. I hear so many horror stories personally of people renting out photo booths from really bad companies who just never showed up things like that. So a lot of times they're really just looking for after you have the initial, hey, we show them what we do, we show them why they should stay and show them what to do next and you really wow them that way. Maybe the next step really is just to say, hey, we're very competent. We have over 100 reviews, um, wedding wire awards, like not awards, etc. And we're gonna do a really good job at your wedding. Maybe that's the next step. Uh, maybe just look at past galleries. If you are maybe a private event company, that does a little bit above and beyond. Maybe you guys have really great back shots that you purchased from Photo Booth Supply Co. Um, or maybe you guys have really cool props, maybe you wanna show that off. So just really understand the customer journey that you want them to go through that would show them what really stands out about your brand. Yeah, um, contact, no contact us button here or here or here or here or here. Okay, so the first button I see is down here. Um, the owner of this website could argue that this is a button, but it's again, not in, enclosed, it's just text. You gotta really make sure that using the common UI elements that everybody knows now, it's, it's wrapped around in some sort of rectangle or bubble or something, to let them know it's a button. Or you at least, at least have an underscore if it's a link. So yeah, now the customer has to scroll down through one, two, three, four, five, six, six sections just to learn what to do next. Guys, make it easy for your customers. They want to pay you money. Just let them do it. So <laughs> put these buttons right on top, top right corner, and you'll be in good shape. Perfect. And a soiree booth here. Okay, so they get right to business down here, which is awesome. Uh, you can definitely just check your date here. Um, it's almost like a restaurant reservation, right? If you guys are, I would, I would actually suggest you have something like this because you could argue that the customer's first step into booking you is to see if you are available. Um, so if you are a company that only has like one photo booth and if you're booked that day, then you're booked and you don't do any sort of white labeling, um, you don't have any buddies that can do that, or if you're not interested in buying a second one, which I, you know, I would say 100% buy a second one because you don't want to give that revenue away, then maybe it's good to have a calendar and to show prospective clients which dates you are available for, which ones you're not, because you don't want to be inundated with clients that 
um, or lead, excuse me, you're going to call them on the phone, spend a long time with them only to find out that they're not booked on your date. So always important to figure out what date it is. This um, company, a soiree, I love that name, by the way, um, wanted just the, the first thing is to check the date availability, which is, which is awesome. And that's the one they sent over, which is fantastic. Great. So again, three things. What do you do? Why should I stay? What do I do next? So now that we got that covered, I'm just gonna go around these websites and just uh, look around. Um, those are the three big things. Uh, I'm just going to peek around here and just give a few tips of advice. Um, again, I don't know what all of these photo booth owners goals are, what clients are trying to attract. Um, but if you can see here, if this tr client is trying to attract corporate, then they're doing a great job here. Um, in fact, I, I'm a really big fan of, of removing redundancy. And if you can show it with a picture or video, then then you remove the text. So here, if you're showing all these awesome logos, then do we even need to write our clients to some of our incredible friends? You could just put the logos on there. And that for me, that's all that's that's all that you really need. Um, I'm a big fan of Instagram because some people are really, really afraid of putting in their emails because they don't want to get spam. But if someone is following you on Instagram, that's more or less having them subscribe to your email list. Um, obviously, they might not get all of your posts um, because of Instagram's algorithm, but it is a great first step. So having people go to your Instagram feed is awesome, and hopefully that opens up. It does. Perfect. Great. And then hopefully uh, you would be able to follow um, Snapbox SF. Oh, I might follow back there. Awesome. And there, there you go. He just got another follower. Now he's almost at 3,000. Freaking awesome. Great. So Instagram, always a good thing. It also allows you to convey to your customers that you're up to the trends. Um, you can't believe how many companies out there don't even have an Instagram, right? Um, you guys are on the cutting edge, you're photo boost, you're, you're essentially renting out your technology. But DJ companies out there, photographers, florists, wedding planners, et cetera, a lot of them don't even have an Instagram, which is freaking crazy to me. So just even having that and posting often will show your clients that you're booked up and you're doing events and you also care about your aesthetics and you also care about your presence, um, which is fantastic. So just Instagram feed, always a good thing. Um, some websites like Squarespace have that as an add-on. Um, so go ahead and do that. Super great. So these overlays, this is so difficult because first of all, it's, it's hard to read a lot of these. So whenever you do this, just make sure that the opacity is a little bit more opaque in the background here so I can read it. For raves too and the testimonials, this is a lot of text. So remember the customer is looking through multiple websites like I'm looking right right now. They're gonna be skimming all this stuff. You don't want them to do a lot of work. So. I would just, in here, let's just see, what if we can just narrow this down to one sentence? You can, uh, I would say, if we were to take this just to one sentence, I would have it in the highlighted section right now. Some of our favorite photos from our weddings are from Snapbox. That's all they need to hear. All, all the customer needs to know is that, okay, there have been some five-star reviews about Snapbox SF. That's that's great. That's comforting. I know I can book them, right? You don't need to do the whole shebang. Most of the time, they're not going to read it. If they want to read it, then link them below like, hey, see more reviews on Yelp or see more reviews on our webpage, something like that. But most people are just going to be skimming this. I also recommend having at least three testimonials on here. One is not enough by any means. So three, keep it short, keep it concise, and you're good to go. The reason why I don't want any of this is Ricky is amazing. Not much else to it. We knew we wanted Ricky to host our photo, Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. So if somebody reads this and they book an event and Ricky's not there, what are they going to think, right? Oh, I wanted Ricky. This is the person Jackie and Dan was really raving about. Oh, my gosh. Now he's not there. And I feel like I'm short, um, you know, shorthanded, blah, blah, blah. Like you don't want that to happen. So I would try to remove the names of you as the owner as much as possible from the website. What that also does is it makes you seem like a much bigger company too, which is always great. So yeah, um, let's take about here. Let's check this out. How we got started. Cool. Oh, 
Awesome. I always like in the about page to show some pictures too. Um, this doesn't really convey the brand doesn't really drive it home. Like, what are you guys about? What is, if you, if you guys, I don't if Ricky actually goes to all these events, which is very cool in itself, um, right. You're not a scalable strategy, but if this is a lifestyle business and it's fun for you guys and you, and you really enjoy doing that, then hell yeah, put Ricky all over the place. Right. But if you do want to promote Ricky, and that idea, then then put your face on here. And you're obviously talking about the story of yourself too in here, whatever, from my understand. So yeah, if you want to make it personal, then make it personal. I've owned a wedding photography business for 10 years. And a lot of my website was conveying Brandon Wong and Katrina Santos um, and why we are going to be the awesome photographers for you and showing our personality and showing what we're all about. Um, but that was what we were selling. We we're selling not only our photographs, but our presence at the wedding as well and our personalities and how we're going to be so fun. So if you are selling either yourself or how fun your attendants are, put that on the site. I want to see that. Cool. And then blog. Um, blog. I'm not a huge fan of the blog being on the nav bar there. Uh, if you're doing a blog for SEO purposes, then I would put it at the bottom of the footer. This is blogs are a way to get naturally people to find you via seo on google they click on that and they click on the home page something like that or hopefully they click on some sort of premium or click on a on that call to action uh but if if i'm already looking for a photo booth company and i'm landing on your on your home page clicking a blog probably isn't going to be high up on my list um galleries on the other hand would be high on my list because i want to see past events that makes a lot of sense so this is really cool. I definitely want to see this. This is great. Uh, and it looks like from the blog, it seems like almost redundant to the gallery because this also looks like a gallery as well. There's a couple like gear posts in there. So yeah, I would put all that in the footer. Um, and if you want them to follow along in your story, have them follow on your Instagram because at least there, you can actually contact them afterwards, but you know, there's no way for them to subscribe or follow your blog right here. So if you want them to, to continue following your brand, Instagram is the best way for sure. Love the salsa images. It looks fantastic. Cool. Chronicles too. Um, again, I, I try to not use vague wording. Like what does Chronicles mean is that is that the blog? Is that, do you have a blog here? Just be super obvious and upfront about what it is. It looks like that's just another blog. So yeah, that's confusing. Uh, inquire. I'm hoping this is the, the contact form. Cool. Great. Um, honestly, I don't like to use fancy words when it comes to websites, especially in the, in the, the navigation bar. I would just click contact you know, or book now or something like that. I just make it really easy. Um, you inquire, great. It, it definitely makes you sound high end. Uh, at the same time though, it might confuse some people. Just put contact, super easy. Everyone uses it. I have no idea what this is for up here. Um, that's interesting, a little bit confusing. I thought honestly at first glance that it was an empty button um, or, or just like a, a button that's waiting to load. And then I clicked on it and was like, oh, I guess I can type in there, but I, I have no idea what that is. Let me try. Interesting. Oh, it's, oh, it's search. Okay. That's not obvious at all. So, all right, cool. Uh, all right. Snapbox SF. I hope you uh, got some help from this going to cloud nine. Now I'm going to pop in here. Um, very cool. I would say, Oh, okay. So what's this looking a little crazy for me? So I, the, okay, cool. Again, going back to there, if you're going to put a lot of logos on here, make sure that you guys understand that you guys are going to be attracting a lot of corporate clients. It's also not bad for the private events too, because if, if I'm uh, getting married, I'm going to see that Samsung trusts you, Costco trusts you, Specialized trusts you, Marriott trusts you. I'm pretty sure that I can trust you too. So this is all fantastic stuff. I always like to have the logos be the same color because it's now orange and blue and red and all this stuff. Um, you want the focus to be on the brand, the focus to be on the call to action specifically. Um, just have this be either all gray, all black, something like that to make it all match. Um, 
I also noticed on this specific homepage that almost all the images were uh, results of the photo booth captures, which is great. Um, th the thing is that they're all kind of the same, more or less. They're, they're still photos, and it's kind of the same thing over and over again. Obviously, there's different backdrops. But if you really wanted to stand out here um, and show off just the, the output and images from the photo booth, I'd also show off the different um, types of capture you can do. Like, obviously, you guys can do the three photo GIMs, so you guys can probably do boomerangs, right? All that fun stuff. Show that off. Also, if you do have any of our photo booths, Legacy, Queso, or Salsa, um, those photo booths look freaking awesome. So I would show that off too. So again, this is, goes back to the why should I stay portion of it. A lot of people might have um, similar image quality or similar images. You can't really tell when they're so small, but when you show off the awesome photo booth that you bought from us, it really makes you stand out even more. So I always try to put a picture of you again, either the photo booth or, or the output or best both. Have a photo booth and people interacting in the background. And the great thing is we provide you guys with hundreds of marketing materials. So you, you don't have to do a photo shoot. You're saving tons of money without even need to do all that work. Um, yeah. And I see this little banner up here that says click here to see video. If you feel like that's the first thing that the customers need to do before booking, then I would, again, why is it all the way up here? And why can I exit out of it? Like if this is a really important thing, then I would put it right here in the middle. We offer a solution, you know, I would say we offer an amazing photo booth solution to help you capture amazing memories from your events, something like that. And then if you really want them to see a video, I'd put that button right here. Um, the banner up here is really, in my opinion, used for things that are temporary, like, hey, we're closed for Memorial Day type thing, um, or we have a special going on. Um, that's not, I would have, again, this right here if it's something you really want your customers to do. Packages, click here, check this out. Schools and nonprofit, basic. Okay, so first of all, let's, we gotta make sure that this is very easily readable. Comparison charts are really important because you, you need to always be pixel perfect here. Um, you need to make sure that all these align with each other. You can see that this one's a little higher and that's because this is obviously um, two columns here or two rows, excuse me. So you just gotta make sure because you gotta make it really easy for the customers to compare all this stuff. So even this is, is pretty hard to read just because it, it just keeps changing. So what I would do is I would, I would left justify everything since it's all straight, 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 straight. And then all these are aligned with each other. And then I, what I would do is I would bold or highlight the ones that are actually different from the other one. Um, and if you're doing a lot of schools and nonprofits and they're, they have a, a different pricing, then I, I wouldn't even put that on the website. I would just keep that off. Uh, or I put a button down here that says, hey, if you're a school and nonprofit, contact us. We have special rates. Um, because now putting this on there, unless you're doing a lot of schools and nonprofits, um, you're making all the people that aren't in schools and nonprofits work even harder to understand your pricing. Now I have to have a third column where I'm looking at it, I'm comparing. I know even if I'm not a school profit, I kind of want to know the difference in between um, just because it's, it's in front of me and it's there. Also, if for some reason your schools and nonprofits had a better price, then I would probably just knowing that as a customer, I might even try to bargain with you knowing that, hey, if you can give schools and profits, nonprofits a better price, and you probably can give me a better price too. So always, always really good to just keep it simple, have two packages or something simpler than that, and we're good to go. Awesome. Find your photos. That's always fun. I think it's called Pixie Set. Great. That's awesome. You can also say find your photos, even call it, you know, galleries. Um, galleries is good because it almost invites every single person to go onto this section. Because if it says find your photos, it, it might turn off some people that are have never booked your photo book before. But if you say galleries, then it might invite these prospective customers to see all the amazing events that you've done before. Backdrops, templates, book is perfect. That looks great. You got definitely a lot of backdrops here. That's awesome. Love the different photo booth supply co. That looks great. Templates. I like I like this these sections because it really gives the prospective customer an idea of what you guys can offer. Oh, and this is so good. Love it. It aligns with a lot. These are our pictures as well. Great man. Um, book us. Cool. Looking great here. 
Whoa, okay. A lot of stuff going on here. And I will say that the more that you have on your form, the less people are gonna fill it out. This is a lot of work here. First name, last name, email, phone number, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and this is kind of the minimum. I think that this is this is good if you want a serious person and you only want serious inquiries, which is everybody wants that, right? At the same time, though, know that the more you request from your customers, the more drop off you're going to get. I think the statistic was like every time you add one more field, like 20 or 30 percent of people are dropping off. So adding this much, know that yet yeah, you're probably going to get a lot more qualified people going to your website, but you're also going to not have as many people signing up or filling out that form. So for us at Photo Boost Flyco, we obviously have um, a great team here. We have a lot of people and we want a lot, as many people to contact us as possible. So our contact form is like straight up just name and email. That's it. Because we want to get them on the phone and we want to talk to them and we want to understand what their goals are trying to achieve and we can talk to them. And obviously we're all very great on the phone here and we're comfortable doing that. So if you guys are comfortable on the phone, comfortable on the email and comfortable and have the time, excuse me, to, to talk to these people, then I would actually reduce that form and make it as small as possible. Just so it's easier and there's less friction for your customers to contact you guys. Phone number is great too. This wedding photographer thing is a little out of left field. Like I would probably tell them afterwards if after they contact us, like, hey, great, um, I'm glad you booked a photo booth. By the way, do you need a wedding photographer? It just seems really mismatched on here. Um, it doesn't seem logical to have a wedding photographer on the photo booth website, um, at, at least like this in this section. Um, you might want to put here like, you know, on the, maybe at the footer, like check out our wedding photography service, something like that. But on the booking form, it's just a little odd. I'd probably tell them that over the phone or in the email. This is just confusing. And as you guys know, the more things that you guys do and put on your website, the, the less specialized your customers might think you are. So like, oh, okay, Cloud9 does photo booth and photography, or like, why are they recommending her? Are they together? Like, it just, if you have one focus on your website and only do one thing, it just reinforces the fact that you do that thing really, really well. All right, so Philly Booth Works. Let's check this out. I think this is a like kind of a one pager website. Let's see this info. Yep, everything is on one page. So it's almost like a like a fancy landing page here. Cool. Awesome. Great. So this is short and simple and sweet. This is this is cool. Um, it's really straightforward. I mean, there. I will say that that we need to work on a few things that we talked about before. I'm changing the text on the website, and I will say there's a lot of text here for sure. A lot of text everywhere. I would probably shorten it up as much as possible. Um, and almost, I'm a big stickler about this. If you're going to be doing this sort of like um, six different bullet points here, I try to have all of them be within the same um, length. So if setup is, is three rows long. I'd probably have consultation be three rows long too, all that stuff. Also, a really big thing here is feature versus benefit. So when we're talking about selling your product on these platforms, a lot of times people sell the feature. So, hey, share. The affiliate booth works Flutter booth sends a branded web gallery instantly to your client's phone and allows them to share to all their social media platforms. Just watch the fun spread throughout the event social media. Okay, so you're you're literally telling them what is happening to the photo booth and to the users here, which is not as sexy as, hey, you know what, our photo booth allows your event to be shared across thousands of people from all around the world because our images that we capture are so amazing, are so shareable that the guests aren't going to have any sort of resistance posting this online and sharing it with their friends, right? So you want to tell them like what the actual feature does for them. How does having sharing benefits the, the end user, right? Or you can say like, hey, 
memory shared in real time. So your guests could have fun posting on all sorts of social media platforms, stuff like that. Um, in terms of the setup, like, oh, this is perfect right here. Setup is a breeze. We'll take care of the back end before your events. So all you have to do is show up, plug in, and start the show. So I'll, this could even be shorter, right? Hey, all so setup. Maybe put setup included right here, right? Setup and uh, I would say setup and attendant included if you guys provide that. And then all you need to write here is just show up to just just show up to the event, plug in, and start the show. That's it. It's just so easy. Um, you don't even t- you need to talk about all the stuff you're gonna do in the back end. Just how does it benefit them? Um, consultation, right? Yeah, we'll go talk, blah, 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 blah. But how does the consultation help them, right? The consultation helps you because we're going to talk to you and understand what your goals are for the event, understand how you're going to decorate it. So we're going to have those photo booths match seamlessly to your event, so your guests think you're going to have a custom photo booth that was built just for you. Something like that. Just really show off what, how will this benefit them. Uh, this is a lot here. It's intense. Uh, I, I love all the GIFs that you're using from our from our uh, marketing materials. I will say GIFs are super high in size. So the more you put on here, the laggier it's going to get. So and even the hell this website is uh, is struggling just a little bit here just because of the, the amount of GIFs. It's a little laggy. So I would probably limit it to just eight. Um, and we're not differentiating all these here. So like I would probably say like, okay, we could do LED effects, we could do this, we could do that, we could do boomerangs, we could do photos and stuff like that. Um, these are all boomerangs, right? So you're really only showing off like one feature. So make sure that if you are showing a lot, just try to diversify it and add on top of that too. Like, yeah, these are how cool boomerangs are, but we also do photos, we also do GIFs, all things like that. Don't waste a section on just boomerangs. Show off as many things as possible. Pricing. Okay, perfect. I might want to combine pricing with up here because now you're showing the value. This is what we do for you, and this is what we provide you for that, right? $550. I would say you could probably charge a lot more than that because it's also awesome. You could probably do a lot more. Um, Yeah, that's great. Awesome. Next page. Yeah, big fan of this website. Good stuff here. Again, the big thing we're missing here is the button. I also don't think all the sharing stuff is absolutely necessary here. And I don't even know what, what are you guys selling here? There's a cart here. Return to shop. Interesting. Okay. Got it. I will say that uh, e-commerce platform for a photo booth rental is a little interesting. I've never seen it before. Um, you know, photo booth rentals are in the professional services category. So a lot of times that transaction takes place you know, over the phone or something, something after initial consultation. E-commerce, on the other hand, what we're doing now, um, this takes place sometimes without any sort of customer um and uh, company interaction whatsoever. I go on a website, I like a t-shirt, I buy it, easy. Um, here on the other hand, it, there's a lot of customization that needs to happen. So unless you're telling the customers like go back onto a website and purchase, then that's another thing. But even then, like we're confusing, oh, this is new. This is not the website I landed on, was it? Okay, interesting. Anyways, yeah, I, I would say the for a customer's initial interaction, um, all this stuff, cart, that could all be at the bottom of the page. Uh, we don't need any of that right away. We want to tell people what you guys do. Um, and again, unless the owner of this company just changed the website right now, I, I saw it was a, there was a video background going on here and there was some, t- uh, uh, some text, so I don't know what happened there. Or maybe it was, uh, oh, okay, maybe they showed me the salsa. Okay, got it. Okay, so the link that whomever posted this was linking to directly the salsa page. So this is actually the home page here. Got it. Okay, yeah. So 
now I'm going to crystal clear. So I would say I would prefer that text from before. Um, this is a lot of stuff visually going on. I'm, I'm a fan of cleaner looks. So I would, there's just a lot of things happening here. Like, where do my eyes go? Do you want to be on that, on this, on this, on this, on this? There's just a lot of stuff happening here. So I would probably focus in on just a few pictures that you really want um, or just have one big image and just scroll through them. Um, this is a lot. And plus, this also conveys that your prints will look like this. So unless your prints are square with a white border, then I definitely wouldn't show this either. Um, there's just a lot going on. The glitter background, too, is very detailed, and there's a lot of texture on there. Um, and just it, it's hard for my eyes to kind of settle on anything right now, especially this is the first thing that people are landing on. Um, let's see how this looks on a, on a responsive platform. Yeah, okay, cool. Got it. Yeah, I didn't even see those arrows on this desktop form because they're so, it's almost hidden in this background here. So yeah, the big thing here is the cart. I would get rid of it altogether or have it be hidden. So if a customer does want to proceed and after they talk to them on the phone or got go through email, then send them a direct link to that e-commerce platform. But it's just really confusing right away because like I think most people, especially in professional services, when I'm renting something out, whether it be a DJ, photographer, et cetera, like there's no e-commerce platform on any of these websites. So don't confuse people. Um, great. This is a lot of words here. I would try to get away from words as much as possible. And again, if you can show it, show it. So Funky Town was selected, the not on a wedding wire, you know, put that badge on there. I think they give you a badge. I'll put that on there instead. Put how many reviews that you have. If you can show it, show it. If you're doing this for SEO reasons, cool. Do another page or something like that. Don't have it be on the home page. Um, because again, the customer is not gonna read this, I guarantee you. Guarantee you. So whatever you put in here, they're gonna skim past. If you can look at our photo with Supplyco website. We are so image heavy. We are so aesthetics forward and people still don't read our website. They ask very obvious questions, which, you know, I don't, I don't mind. People are busy and it just, it just goes to show you like how many people just don't read at all. And I think the most we have at a website is like maybe three sentences next to each other and other, otherwise it's, it's one or two sentences and that's it in each section. So yeah, this is a lot right here for sure. And also, this whole two column thing, words here, words here, words here, like just focus on what you guys want the customer to read and then move this in another section. Because right now, again, they're reading a lot of stuff like this. This is great. I'm, I'm reading one thing at a time then I'm reading something else and I'm reading something else. Perfect. On desktop form, it's just a lot in one section. Perfect. And again, be really careful about your imagery that you put on the website here. Um, like this girl, this lady, I hope this lady is, is cut off by two people from different people. You only want to put your best foot forward, right? You, you never, you walk into a, a luxury store and see images or videos at the display be anything less than flawless. Everything you put on your website, especially on the homepage needs to be like just absolutely polished with the most beautiful people the most amazing backdrops, the most amazing expressions. And again, luckily all of our marketing materials, we did all that for you. We have called down from what? Thousands and thousands of images that we shot to only pick the best ones with the most amazing expressions. So if you bought our photo booth, just put those images on there. If you end up using your own later on, which is totally fine as well, then find those images that really put your best foot forward. Most amazing looking people, most amazing smiles, the most amazing expressions, most amazing backdrop, most amazing lighting in the photo booth, everything. Cool, all right. Oh, okay, so this is cool. I, I like to call this like the diploma section. Um, this, this is where you show off all of your accolades and really reduce the risk for your customers. The customers want to go into a website, they want a good experience, but they also want to make sure that they're not hiring someone that's going to stiff them. So having all this be right up front up here is always a good thing. I always prefer that. And just having the, see how easily this is to read. It's one metric, one stat, one metric, one stat, one metric, one stat, and then all these badges here, right? All that right below here is all you really need to show people that you're not going to make a risky decision by choosing photo booth supply. Oh, sorry, by choosing funky town photo booth. So that's, that's awesome there. Great. I love it.
And even if you notice that I started off this video saying, hey, we're photo boost FICO, we sell over 2,000 photo boosts, 55% but go on to purchase two or more and the average photo booth owner makes seventy one thousand dollars so that's my diploma what is your diploma how do you put that on your website how do you reduce risk find that out and make sure that's on your home page all right running out of time here so let's try to go through this quickly i think we got through as much as possible here we did a lot already um if you guys have any other questions, these websites look all so good. And with a few tweaks, I think that you guys are going to be making a whole lot more money um, here. Yeah, this looks great, guys. Looks so good. I'm so happy that you guys are using a lot of our market materials to make you guys stand out. And if you have any questions, comment on this thread below. I'm happy to answer as many of them as possible. Um, if, I'm, if I'm posting this in the Facebook group, if you guys are finding this on YouTube or Vimeo, something like that, um, if you guys want to check out our website, go to photoboothsupplyco.com and see some of the offerings that we can provide you to help grow your business. Thank you so much and look forward to hearing from you soon.